It's winter, and the naked bodies of two girls have been found in or near a river. That's bad news for investigators. Water washes away DNA. Collecting evidence is not going to be easy. Investigators set about collecting body swaps, minute particles left on the victim, to get them back to the forensic scientists. The um, body swabs were being biked back to the laboratory. Those were the first things we started on to try and get um, some DNA information for the investigation. The FSS, the real CSI, decide on a strategy. Early swab evidence is turning up contaminated material. The scientists decide to remove mud and silt from the hair of the girls. If any material is left, it could have been left by the killer. It's a big job. Many man hours spent in looking at fibres recovered from the girls and trying to match those up to um, fibres from clothing or cars from the suspect. Um, the particular difficulty we had was with the two girls that were found in the water, again for similar reasons that we described with the DNA. They'd been found in the water, they were naked, any fibres that had been stuck to their skin would have been washed away. Um, and initially we thought perhaps there wasn't much we could do looking at recovery of minute trace evidence from those girls. Eventually we thought the only thing we could do really was look at their hair. But the hair was in quite a state, it was very matted and full of silt. Um, but we thought perhaps if there's any fibres present they'll be stuck there. The job of searching for trace evidence involves washing hair and collecting material for classification. Each different stage yields different particles. Almost all are clearly from the riverbank. But now comes a breakthrough. In the recesses of matted locks, the science squad finds a fibre. Exhaustive cross-matching suggests it's from a car. But in the end, uh, one of the fibres that we did recover from uh, Tangle Nickel uh, is here. As you can see, it's quite a small entity. This small entity marks the crucial breakthrough. The science squad can even detect that the fibre is from a Ford Mondeo. Carpets from cars aren't what we call very sheddy. They don't release their fibres very easily. So having found that fibre in her hair would really indicate there'd been quite a degree of contact between her head and that car floor. The forensic team asked the police helicopter unit if there are signs of tracks from the areas where the bodies are found. Amazingly, the chopper crew on airborne spots another body, and this one yields more grisly evidence. This scene was vastly different. The body was found on land. There were a great deal of potential to uh, recover things like DNA evidence, fibre evidence. Um, so this was, this was quite a turning point for us. We were getting exhibits delivered at one o'clock in the morning, three o'clock in the morning. We had a team of people to start work on them immediately. And we were managing to produce DNA profiles within about six to eight hours. Breakthroughs in science now mean that the minutest sample of DNA can yield valuable pointers to criminals. It's just as well. Old-fashioned police work is suggesting to officers that their number one suspect should be a man called Tom Stevens, a loner known to hang around single girls. Police are ready to make an arrest. He was the only suspect, and suspect is a specialist word. Suspect is somebody who is above a person of interest, who there are proper grounds to suspect maybe the murderer. But the proper grounds are wrong. It's the scientists who prove that the killer is a man called Steve Wright. Well, it was a bit of a bombshell because up until that stage, we'd not heard of Wright. He'd featured in the investigation, the police had spoken to him, but he'd not become a, a person of interest to them, he'd not become a suspect and so it was completely out of the blue as far as we were concerned that uh, Tom Stevens in fact didn't look like the person responsible for these killings and now this new person about whom we'd heard nothing right that it rather looked as if he was the person responsible. The killer of this young woman seen en route to her death was convicted of the murders of five women but as police had searched for him they had allowed conventional evidence to point the finger at the wrong man it was the scientists who'd successfully compiled the evidence against Steve Wright. It was lab work that caught the killer.